Let's do it. Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got to figure out how to say her name. I think it's Dijon or D You're not from around here. You're over in Sweden or something. <laughs> how do you say your name? Diana. So it's, it's so, silent, yeah. Diana. And the last yeah. one is Lu <laughs> Lugoli. Lugoli. Any I'm an international. I'm an international maven. So, I am born and raised in Slovenia, Ljubljana. My parents are from Bosnia. My husband, where the last name comes from, is from Kosovo. So he's Albanian, and we live in Sweden. <laughs> so you can imagine our three kids. They are like, they are. They are international mavens. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, I've spent about uh, 53 years in the same house in Fridley, Minnesota, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I didn't move out until I got married recently. Oh, recently? <laughs> oh, congrats. <laughs> well, seven, ten years, something like that. But that's kind of recent when it was 52 years. My brother still lives in that house. <laughs> I love deep it. roots, deep roots. Good. Anyways, I don't do these videos too long because I know that people have that, that commodity of time, you know, there's not much that time. So we just want to get to know who you are and what you do and what you have to offer the world. Are you married and got kids? Yeah, so I'm married for 19 years now. And I have three beautiful daughters, um, 12, 7, and 5. Um, I work now for two years as an online business coach. So I basically support people to launch and scale their online businesses mm -hmm. um and yeah i really like love showing people what they are capable of what the, are their zone of genius and how they can actually transfer their passions to profit yeah That's my wife my is a is a coach also and i'm an advocate of the coach in that oftentimes we get stuck on our own little head and we might take courses or read books and it's on our, our interpretation of that book or that course. And sometimes mm. it takes a third person to go, hey, have you thought about it this way? And all of a sudden they get that, aha. <laughs> Absolutely. Like even if you would read like one book two times, you would have different perspective. Yeah. Because we change. We, we Every single day we'll learn, we grow. And it's that I am all about that personal development. I'm such a nerd. I'm a lifelong student. And I think that that's the beauty of life. Never stop growing, right? Is your uh, niche, is it like the make money online, internet, uh, start your own business, create your own lifestyle niche? Yeah. Yeah, we can say like that. <laughs> I think that's a popular thing, especially, I mean, at this point in time with this coronavirus thing going on, it doesn't really affect, I mean, it still affects people, but uh, being an online income earner, mm -hmm. it's a lot different than, like, I was just thinking about it today because somebody was talking about that minimum wage and all that kind of stuff. If you've got a minimum wage, that means there's only 24 hours in a day. You can only go so far. What if all of a sudden your rent goes up? With an online business, you can scale that up if you know how, right? Right. And here's the thing. We, I think that we, you know, online business owners, we have our own economy, right? Um, and we don't have a cap. So your limit, your, your, your income is basically like you limit yourself. And I believe that, and that's not my quote. I don't know whose quote it is, but your income can grow only to extend that you grow. And if you don't grow, your, your income can grow. And as you said, if you can turn your passions into profit, if you are like, you have, if you have a skills, um, you can literally like do anything online right now. I had just had a client today. She said, you know, she's a yoga teacher. She does um, yoga in the studio. And she said, you know, because she helps moms, um, she said, you know what, we are shutting down our studio and I'm going to do it live, online. And I said, perfect. And actually mom said, you know what, instead of two times going to yoga studio, we want to have this online thing three times per week. Sure. What a better way to actually like have, having that resourcefulness, I would say. Yeah. And then the, the flexibility of being able to do it when you want, when you feel like it. And then, um, 
you know, she could tag on like a, a, an annual retreat where the people can come together and meet each other and in yeah. Bali or Costa Rica or. <laughs> good, good. I'm going to pass this forward. <laughs> exactly. Why not? I'm, my background's in the event industry because I started out doing magic as a kid, doing um, entertainment at corporate events, and then I got into the event world. So I think events are a, a great way to meet, connect, and do business. <gasps> you know, you got me here because this year we actually said we were going to change our business model. We do like 97% of our business, everything online. We are present in 21 countries. We we had like literally students from everywhere. But this year I said, you know what, because I'm such an extrovert, right? <laughs> I love like really talk to people one-on-one -on -one in person. And I said, yeah. I'm going to have more workshops and more offline um, events and just when I actually stretched myself went out of my comfort zone I organized I actually we actually started to organizing events here in Stockholm with a friend from Italy and yes corona happened <laughs> well there is that but it's a rare occasion but uh, when it's all said and done and over then you can meet because yeah it, it's a lot yeah. of fun to meet everybody online like we're doing now and then to be actually go like I was doing some stuff with a guy over in the United, United Kingdom and I'm in Minneapolis and we Skyped all the time. And then we met each other in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And it was a lot of fun. And, oh, how you doing? It's fun to see the real person. You know? So good. So good. So yeah. good. Love this. So I have a question regarding like, do you think it's more important to go for a, like say you're, you're uh, going to promote a business and you're going to promote a product or a service. Do you think you should go for a product or service that is hot? Or do you think you should go for a product or service that you're passionate about? Definitely. You choose passion over everything. Okay. Just checking. I think that it's so important that you, especially now when we have so many opportunities, so many, like literally we have like everything in a reach of our hand, like everything is online. You should definitely invest into yourself and do what you love. I've been in, in, I've been employed and I did some really crappy jobs, <laughs> like really, not when I look back, which I'm grateful, you know, I learned a lot, but there is no greater feeling than actually to do what you love doing and waking up in the morning and say, you know what, it's my time to serve my people and to bring and to change people's lives. I think that that's the purpose. That's like you have, if you have a, calling just go for it yeah if you have something that's that pulls you through it's easy to get out of bed yeah, I've been having absolutely. to get out of bed it's like i can't wait to get out and go do what i like to do yeah i think it's important yeah. so i'm glad you said that because some people go yeah you should you should sell the, the fidget spinner because everybody <laughs> remember those <laughs> yeah i know i have an adhd kid so we have must <laughs> like we have must <laughs> so much fidget spinners <laughs> <laughs> i get it yeah, but that stuff comes and goes, you know, but uh, you find that passion that you're, that your core interest, your core passion, then they can, you know, it'll drag you, drag you, pull you through, inspire you. Yes. Yeah. And I also feel that I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm very multi-passionate. I have different passions, but not every passion of mine. I love cooking. I love cooking, but I don't, I wouldn't necessarily do this for a living, right? Mm -hmm. if, and if I can turn something that is really like my passion, and so I call this, and this is a good thing to talk about, I call this my, my happy space, right? My happy place. So something that you're passionate about, something that your people think that you are like good at, right? You need to have your audience that they think that you are badass <laughs> and whatever you want to do. And also like connecting the marketplace. If you can actually combine those three, you have a winning combo. Yeah, I think uh, in my opinion, the struggle that most people are having is the product market fit. It doesn't fit if the market, if the audience doesn't want what the thing is, it's yeah. not going to work. And you got to get that. Some people are just going for numbers. You know, I got 20,000 followers on Twitter, but I'm not making any money. Right. Product doesn't fit. I mean, 
And it's also, I think that people are a little bit self, like no, self, not selfish, but ignorant, I would say. You know, if you don't ask your audience what they need, what they want, and you don't listen to them and respond according to their needs and desires, mm -hmm. it won't convert. Exactly. Like, I'll okay. tell you a quick story. There was a friend of mine that used to teach people how to do trade shows, and there was a company that was sold phones. And the salesperson was talking about this phone that has all this, this call waiting and the voicemail and all these different technical features. And the guy says, I want this one over here. And it was just a basic phone. And the guy thought, the salesperson couldn't figure out why does he want just the basic one when there's this one with all these wonderful things. And the guy says, I run a construction company. All the guys have big hands. I need big buttons. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Wanted. So good. Yes, Very simple, but yes. you'd never know unless you ask. Good so again, point. I don't like to do these too long, but I would like to know, is there something that you've got that you offer? Uh, like so oftentimes people like say, you know, a, a, like a consulting session to find out, like say somebody li listens to this and they go, I want to start a business and I liked what she had to say. How do I find her? Yeah, so what I would love to offer to your audience and also to my audience who will watch this, I would love, I'm a goal mapping practitioner. And for me, like we as business owners, we oftentimes, we set goals, right? Um, I do it a little bit differently. I set intentional goals and I have a three part video series that is basically takes you how to set up goals, how to ask yourself right questions. Tony Robbins said, and you probably know the guy, um, he says that quality of your life is really determined by quality of the questions that you ask, your, ask yourself. Sure. And I walk you through some intentional goal setting questions. So you determine, you make a plan, you make a vision, and then you actually transfer that vision into a digital vision board. So this is a three-part series oh. that I teach. It's really cute, super useful, and yeah, at least you will have fun. And at the end, I can promise you that you will have a product that is a digital product, and you can say, you know what, I learned something. So I, I'm all really about the best. Cool. It's good. it's almost like like I just had this question online just the, today about goals. They had a thing about goals, and they think they're asking if goals are good or bad. And I, I go kind of both ways. Like one of the, there's different types of goals. A destination goal is one, but a time goal is another and an amount goal, like a, you want to make so much mm -hmm. money. But it, what you're talking about, if you have a destination goal, like I want to be financially free in six months, you're creating mm -hmm. a map for them. Yeah, yeah, because if, yeah, absolutely. If you're traveling and you, do, you don't have a map to go where you want to go, now we got the Google maps and all that kind of stuff but you gotta have a course to find out where you're going because you're going the Absolutely. wrong direction. <laughs> well, if you don't have a plan, everything will get you <laughs> where you don't want to go, right? Well, Tony um, Robbins so used to say that uh, some people are traveling west looking for a sunrise. Oh, right. <laughs> Because yes, and this is actually like, yes, something, some things are really, you need to listen to your inner compass. I'm, I'm not going to go into that woo-woo stuff, but your inner compass, your intuition is always the right uh, map, if you want to call it like that. But it also like, you need to be strategic. When you, we as business owners, we need to have some strategy. Um, so this is basically like you create a roadmap, as you say, um, if I want to achieve X, x income x whatever it is i want to lose x weight whatever that is i need to have some plan behind and i need mm -hmm. to and this plan is backed up by your why your desires why yeah. do i want to do this because if you don't have the right why the right drive what motivates you what drives you you will fail so we start with those why and we go deep and we ask our that's a passion questions. thing kind of yeah, if you don't have something pulling you through, you're going to run out of energy and ah, what am I doing this for? So you got to have that drive. I, I use an acronym called GOSPA, which stands for Goal, Objective, Strategy, Plan, and Action. So you set that goal and you put things in place. What was that? I love that. I A. No. <laughs> I love that. G-A-S-P-O. Oh, GOSPA. Goal, 
objective, strategy, plan, and action. Gaspa. Okay, I'm going to remember this because this is kind of like first... gospel, but gaspa. Gaspa. Okay. So I'm going to close this up. But first, how do we find you? You got a website, something that people can remember, and I will put the link to these two. Absolutely. So the best way to connect with me is on Facebook. Just search for Diana Lugoli in my name and on Instagram. I love behind the scenes stories. So you can check uh, what I'm doing, like when I'm not coaching, um, when I'm not um, running after my kids. So you can check all these behind the scenes stories. I love to connect there as well. So yeah, hope to chat with you there. Okie dokie. And I will put your, the links and stuff in the, the things that I blog and propagate out to the internet so we'll close this off i thank you very much for spending time with us and if we want to do this again later just let me know just rattle my cage and i'll look it up thank you so much brad it was such a pleasure thank you thank you peace bye <laughs> peace <laughs>